history fighting for its future. We'll have details coming up. Check out this dramatic picture, a river rescue attempt in flood-ravaged Georgia. Now, Liz Walker, Jack Williams, Bruce Schwegler, Bob Lobel. This is WBZ News 4. The carousel under the clock. This is Hall, Nantasket Beach, where tonight we're celebrating Massachusetts. This carousel is a landmark, but there's much more to Hall than fun and games. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Walker on Nantasket Beach. You know, it's an overcast day. You can barely see very far, but even on a day like this, you can. You can appreciate the beauty of a place like Hull. Hull is a town that's always defined itself by the sea. It's a town rich in maritime history. We're going to talk about a lot of that coming up, but first, let's go to Jack Williams with today's top news stories. Jack? Liz, thank you very much. There was a big win today for prosecutors in the O.J. Simpson case. Crucial evidence, like the bloody glove gathered at his estate, will be allowed in a trial. In a blow to Simpson's defense, the judge ruled the detectives were justified in their warrantless search. News of the ruling sent shockwaves through the court with strong reactions from the victim's families. Nicole Brown's father, his daughters Dominique and Denise were all visibly moved, as was Ronald Goldman's mother. That's how day five of the O.J. Simpson case began today. Kathleen Kennedy Fowle takes a seat on the bench about to issue the most momentous decision of her career as a judge. Her choice, to take sides with O.J. Simpson or with the L.A. police who went to his house hours after the double murder. This is really a gray area of the law. I mean, and here's no the way the judge formula. saw it. First, police had been to the murder scene. Images of victims and blood were vivid in their minds. And police knew that Nicole Simpson's two children had been awakened and taken to a police station. The place for two small children whose mother has been murdered is not at the police station, <clears throat> sitting in a corner drawing pictures on a tablet. The place for those kids is with their family. Their next of kin, O.J. Simpson. That's one reason detectives went to his home and waited, and waited for someone to answer the phone. And while they waited, they found evidence that convinced them not to wait anymore. A blood stain on the white Bronco parked on the street. And of course, this is the crucial piece of evidence, but it by itself, with all, without all of the other surrounding circumstances, would not be enough. But finding no one home and cars in the driveway, the detectives felt they had no choice but to go over the wall. This would be a very easy decision for me if, in fact, these officers went in there like stormtroopers. But the testimony, as elicited by um, the officers and as supported by the witness that's, witnesses that testified on behalf of the defense, show that this was not what happened. The bottom line, according to Judge Kennedy Powell, O.J.'s constitutional rights were not violated and the police were justified. The court finds that they were in fact acting for a benevolent purpose. They reasonably, reasonably believe that a further delay could have resulted in the unnecessary loss of life. And therefore, the court denies the defense motion to suppress. That happened right at noon today. Attorney Alice Richmond is our legal analyst. You know, the judge's ruling may not have surprised everyone. In fact, last night at 11 o'clock, it was predicted that she would rule that way. I'm curious to get your reaction to the way she detailed her decision today. Well, I thought that she sounded more like a prosecutor giving a closing argument than a judge. A couple of times in my experience, I've been in a courtroom when a judge has done that. If you're the lawyer, you want the floor to open up you want to fall through it, you want the floor to close again. I can only imagine how the defendant feels. I'm curious about how important today's ruling is. Now, as you interpret California law, and I know that you have the law, and you've looked at it this afternoon, and we've discussed it together, do you think, in your opinion, that this judge's ruling will be carried over to Superior Court? I think so. As the, as the law is written, it says that the magistrate's decision at the preliminary hearing, which is what we just saw, is binding on the superior court unless uh, there was other evidence that could reasonably not have been known at the time of the preliminary hearing, or to put it more directly, if there's evidence that could not have been in this hearing because nobody knew about it, they can introduce that. 
but otherwise what the magistrate has done in this hearing impacts and is binding on the Superior Court. It was a tough day for the defense today. Alice Richmond, thanks for joining us. With the judge's ruling, the preliminary hearing then resumed. And News Force Hampton Pearson picks up that part of the story. He says the prosecution bolstered its chain of evidence leading to O.J. Simpson on several fronts. Side-by-side -side photographs of gloves found at the murder scene and on O.J. Simpson's property were introduced. A large color photograph of a cut on Simpson's middle finger on his left hand was also presented. Simpson says the cut came when he broke a glass in a Chicago hotel room. This afternoon, we got the first glimpse of what happened when O.J. Simpson returned from Chicago, was briefly handcuffed, and then went downtown with police for the first round of questions about the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. Shortly, shortly after making contact with him, I removed the handcuffs, and I noticed a bandage on his left hand, the left middle finger in the upper joint area. Did you ask anyone if they could determine how recent the cut was? No, sir. Did you ask anyone if they could determine the severity of the cut? No, sir. Did you ask anyone if they could determine the cause of the cut? No, sir. Did you ask anyone to examine the hand to see if there were any glass particles that may have caused the cut? No, sir. For the first time, the lead homicide investigator offered his theory on how the two gloves are connected. Well, I believe at the time of the murder, the person... What Detective Van Adder testified to in court was his theory that at the time of the murder, whoever was responsible uh, for the crime at the murder scene itself wore gloves. One glove was dropped uh, at the murder scene, and the second one, in his words, transported to Rockingham, which is O.J. Simpson's estate. That was the conclusion of his statement, which uh, the tape stopped there. I'm curious how the prosecutors tie the evidence found at O.J. Simpson's estate to the murder scene. Well, brick by brick, they're in the process of doing that. As a matter of fact, uh, the lead detective at the murder scene said among the first things he noticed were footprints and drops of blood leading away from the bodies of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman. Apparent to me that these blood droplets were not directly associated with the victims and that they were... Uh, perhaps in association with the bloody shoe prints leading from the scene. Defense attorney Robert Shapiro was frustrated in his cross-examination because it appears police analysis of those bloody footprints are incomplete. Were you able to determine whether the blood imprints from a shoe were all from the same shoe? Yes, and that uh, it's uh, my belief that uh, the uh, shoe prints probably belong to a suspect or a left last suspect and we would certainly like to uh, find out what that shoe they are. So between the ruling and the evidence introduced subsequent uh, as the hearing proceeded, it uh, looks like the prosecution's taken a giant stride towards really establishing probable cause uh, for the case to move on. Of course, as you know, Hampton, that hearing is continuing, and we're going to be monitoring the situation. Thanks, Hampton. We'll continue to monitor the Simpson hearing. We'll take you back to Los Angeles of events warrant during this next hour. And we'll also have uh, an update in this newscast around uh, 645 or so tonight. So stay tuned. Now, some other big stories happening today. Severe weather, that's the big story in our area today. High winds, some blinding downpours, and golf ball-sized hail. Uh, News Force Shelby Scott uh, has an update now. Apparently, she is in Plymouth, where six people were sent to the hospital. Give us some details on that, Shelby. Yes, Jack, it, uh, lightning storm roared through much of this area. And in Kingston, there's a Boy Scout camp called Camp Norse. Apparently, six people, two adults and uh, four youngsters, ages 11 to 17, were on the porch of a building when the building got struck. They didn't get hit directly, but they felt a jolt. A couple of them fell down. So they were sent here to Jordan Hospital just in case. None of them are hurt. They're all being released. Now, over in Easton, there were 19 reported strikes of lightning by a firefighter there. This caused uh, a lot of wind and rain and a lot of downed power lines. Uh, crews were all over the area trying to repair it. 
it takes time because it's not like one major power outage, but a tree limb falls here and a few houses are caught off of their electricity. And in another area, the Halifax, Carver, and Easton areas apparently were really hard hit. That's where the uh, golf ball size hailstorms were reported. And a couple houses were struck by lightning and mining, minor fires were caused. But we have no reports of serious injuries from this storm. It happened started around 2 this afternoon and ran till about 3.30 this afternoon. It was wild for people who went through it. But luckily, as I say, no reports of serious injuries. Right now here in Plymouth, the sun is peeking through the clouds and everything looks beautiful, Jack. All right, Shelby, thank you. You know, Bruce is keeping track of the storm, so let's check in and get some late information. Are we out of the way from the worst of it, Bruce? Well, for the time being, Jack, but there is more coming in, as we can see on the radar. First of all, the area of uh, heavy weather. This is from late this morning on radar compilations. You can see all the reds and the oranges and yellows, uh, primarily to our west and south. And from Westboro, where trees are reported down, many of them big ones, uh, through Townsend, even up on Route 2, and also down to the south, as Shelby has mentioned, and on through uh, Medway and Medfield and the Attleboro area, Foxboro, some really heavy thunderstorms with the hail, the wind gusts to 50 and 60 miles per hour. Now, this area has faded, but look what we have going on here. And also, just at the very top of our map, you can just barely see that, uh, we have another heavy cell coming in. Now, this cell moving in the vicinity of Orange, Massachusetts, uh, and in the Brookfields, is, as you saw, is headed off to the east southeast, and it's going to be coming down just to the south of Route 2, so we're going to be keeping an eye on that for you. We've had some reports of rather heavy weather with that system as well. And also note another smaller system down here in northeast Connecticut near Dayville, uh, that is tending to remain stationary. This other one way up here is drifting slowly to the east through the Southern Lakes region with some reports of damage uh, due to trees uh, and uh, power lines. So we have quite a bit of more weather to continue with as well as the steamy stuff. I'll be back later with a complete forecast. I'll see you then. Jack? Bruce, thank you. Meantime in the nation's south, heavy weather is taking a deadly toll. The rising tide in Georgia and Alabama is blamed for as many as 17 deaths. Look at this river rescue. A man and boy caught on some high ground. It took a fire truck extension ladder spanning the torrent to bring the two to safety. Four straight days of rain there, all brought on by what's left of Tropical Storm Alberto. And the forecast for Georgia is for more showers. In the nation's west, a deadly Colorado wildfire rages out of control. Thirteen firefighters killed yesterday as flames fanned by high winds trap them on a mountainside. Many of the bodies remain on the mountain, charred beyond recognition. Another firefighter is missing and several others are hospitalized. Now, as for the fire itself, authorities are letting it burn out of control. It's covering about 2,000 acres and part of a nearby town has been evacuated. Back at home, what has happened to little Danny Rodriguez of Haverhill? The boy's been missing for more than one week now, and as WBZ's Mary Ellen Burns reports, the search for Danny intensified today. State police divers scoured the little river in Haverhill for several hours looking for seven-year-old Danny Rodriguez. They checked the river floor and banks, leaving no stone unturned. When somebody's depositing an object or evidence or whatever, they're going to get rid of it and get out fast. So they're going to look for an accessible area by foot. They're not going to be jumping over fences and over walls. So we're, we're checking the obvious areas here. As the searching continued, Danny's family marked off the time that he's been gone. His Aunt Mildred says she doesn't know how much more she and her sister can take. And the waiting is the worst thing anybody can go through, I feel. But um, right now, I feel like I'm not doing nothing. I feel powerless. I really feel powerless. It's frustrating. You know, just sitting here doing nothing, waiting for some kind of work, some miracle. While the family waits for a miracle, another search was being done, this one by a private search and rescue group in Plug Pond. Police believe the boy was taken last Wednesday by his mother's former boyfriend. Jose Lopez is being held on kidnapping charges. He is a native of the Dominican Republic and has extensive New England ties. So the search for Danny is widespread. If he was acting in conjunction with somebody else, it would not be a stretch at all. No place would be a stretch. In fact, we've been in touch with people from the Dominican Republic and the authorities in Puerto Rico uh, regarding any possibilities to keep an eye out. Posters have been sent down to them. The airports have been notified. Friends and family of the missing little boy continue to hold a vigil here on his front steps where he was apparently taken from last week. As they await word from police, his mother is asking anyone with information about Danny's whereabouts to come forward. In Haverhill, Mary Ellen Burns, WBZ News 4. A private group called Search and Rescue will use its own plane tomorrow morning to search several bodies of water between Haverhill and Lawrence, including the Merrimack River. 
Well, we're going to send it back now to Liz Walker celebrating Massachusetts again tonight, and she's in the fine area of the town of Hall. Liz? Jack, you know, even on an overcast day, there's something so intimate yet awesome about the ocean that it literally takes your breath away. This ocean is a big part of Hull's history, and Hull has an incredible history, rich in maritime stories. It's a town that was settled in 1621 by a group from nearby Plymouth Colony. Ever since then, its location has been its main advantage. De l'Infanterie de la Marine, Compagnie, Marche. Hall plays an important role in the military and maritime history of Massachusetts. During the Revolutionary War, Continental soldiers and French Marines, depicted by these experts, stood sentry at Hall's Fort Independence, which overlooks the strategic entrance to Boston Harbor. All the shipping had to come in between the lighthouse and Hull. So a battery mounted in this position was in a very strong position to uh, fend off any attack. Fort Independence became Fort Revere and continued protecting the entrance to Boston during both world wars. Hull's proximity to Boston also made it a tourist destination, which brought about its heyday. The longest running steamship line in America came to Nantasket Beach from Boston. Hull is also the home of the first electric train in the U.S. It was a delightful trip for the people of Boston because they came from the city and they would go through all the Harbor Islands and they could either get off at Pemberton, ride the trains to Nantasket, or they could continue on to uh, Nantasket and get off at the beach. In an era without cars, that convenient transportation made Hull a playground. The wealthy built lovely homes on Hull Hill to take advantage of the beauty and the breezes. The summer White House of Calvin Coolidge was in Hull, and Boston's Mayor Curley had a summer home here, too. In 1905, Paragon Park was Hull's Epcot. The first Paragon Park was an eye-opener, a New England World's Fair with exhibits from across the globe. People of Boston would come to Hull, go to Paragon Park, and go around the world without going anywhere. In 1923, a fire destroyed the World's Fair and a new Paragon Park opened. That amusement park delighted young and old until it closed in 1985. One of the last remaining attractions, the famous carousel. Today, Hull's location is still perfect for residents and visitors. Happy 350th birthday, Hull. The community of Hull will be celebrating the 350th birthday all summer long. And as a matter of fact, a little later, we'll tell you about some of the special activities coming up this summer. I don't know if you can tell I'm closer to the ocean. The reason I know I'm closer is because I'm beginning to sink. But anyway, the fog is coming in really quickly on an overcast day like this. But speaking of the ocean, imagine that it's your job to save shipwrecked sailors who who are out there in the midst of a stormy sea. Well, that's part of this community's history. And coming up later, we'll tell you the story about that. Jack? I'll look forward to that, Liz. Thank you. Much more ahead on News 4 tonight, including this story. I'm Bill Shields. The two firefighters who were critically injured in that Charlestown fire a couple of weeks ago are coming home. I'll have the story. Also, a hidden danger to children. A warning tonight about kids' clothing like this. It's Lechmere's Extra Discount Days. Two days of additional discounts on hundreds of items, like this Olympus camera. Regular price $119.98, sale price $99.98, now just $89.98 for just two days. Get an extra $50 off side-by-side -side refrigerators, an extra $20 off any dishwasher, plus great sale prices on TVs, VCRs, camcorders, audio, and more. It's Friday and Saturday only, only at Lechmere's Extra Discount Days, where you always get something extra. Hello, Amco Man. That was Zsa, Zsa and Amco's first commercial almost 30 years ago. Since then, hundreds of commercials told you Amco fixes any problem coast to coast. At Amco, there's no monkeying around. The toughest transmission jobs are better than fixed. They're like new. Amco, America's number one transmission specialist for 30 years. We earn America's trust thousands of times every day. Happy anniversary, Amco. Amco, double A, MCO. Oh, there's nothing easy about fishing.
We have a fish finder. Fishing lures. It's a sonar. Transducer. It's a sonar. Hooks, sinkers. I've got what you call a quick as a wink. Then it goes. But you never know. See? Oh, there's a million things involved. Ow! We love seafood. Yes. Lobster at McDonald's at $3.99. This is marvelous. What else you got? Double filet of fish? Got to be a double. Very good. I'll take that with a Coke. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Get it moving. The silver bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Coors Light. Keep on moving. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. Buick Regal is winning the hearts of Americans who once drove imports. Now they're demanding Buick quality. And they appreciate Regal's unique features like remote keyless entry dual zone climate controls, and steering wheel radio controls, a combination of features unavailable on Toyota Camry and Honda Accord. In fact, many former import owners now look overseas only because they enjoy the view. Now, Jack Williams and Liz Walker. WBZ News 4 continues. Good news tonight about those two Boston firefighters injured in the big pier fire in Charlestown. Terrence Jones and Daryl Johnson have been released from a Connecticut hospital. They are the two men that Lieutenant Steve Minahan lost his life trying to rescue. News 4's Bill Shields on the welcome home that awaits the firefighters' return. Franklin and Washington. The firefighters of Engine 8 Ladder 1 were business as usual today. But perhaps there was a little added spring in their step, a little more enthusiasm. Two of their own were coming home. It's just incredible. I, you know, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm the happiest guy in the world. Like, when my family come back? Terrence Jones and Daryl Johnson had been trapped in the burning warehouse and were pulled from the inferno just barely alive. I mean, it's a miracle that the both of them survived. Terrence Jones' I mean, helmet burned and melted, but on the side, a small guardian angel that Bob Brooks had given him. The guardian angel gets you through somehow. You know, it's, uh, it's unexplainable, you know. Many other firefighters have gone through what Jones and Johnson did, but many of them never came back to work, and who can blame them? But the firefighters at this station house say there's no doubt in their minds that Daryl Johnson and Terrence Jones will be back. This is in your blood, I think, and once you get into it, it's not going to change. You're still going to want to come back here and do the same thing all over again. They'll be back, huh? Oh, sure. No doubt about it. Those two will. And longtime residents of the North End hope the two young firefighters do return to duty. Well, they, I tell you, they're very, very good friends of mine. I know them very, very well, and we all say a prayer for him, for them. While Steve Minahan may have given his life trying to save Jones and Johnson, it appears that maybe guardian angels were at work. I'm Bill Shields, WBZ News 4. By the way, those two injured firefighters will make their first public appearance at a news conference set for tomorrow morning, and WBZ will carry that live. The news conference begins at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. You know, you probably don't think of your child's jacket as something dangerous, but apparently it can be. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is warning parents about drawstrings in children's jackets, sweatshirts, and the like. Since 1985, at least 12 children died and 27 nearly strangled when the strings from their clothing caught on playground equipment or other objects. Commission says several kids' clothing manufacturers have already agreed to modify or completely remove drawstrings from their clothes. In the meantime, if you have children's clothing with drawstrings, the government says you may want to remove all drawstrings immediately or sew a seam through the drawstrings so that they can, can't pull out. And cut all string ends as short as needed, as close to the garment as possible. Coming up in a moment, we're going to recheck with Bruce Schwagler because apparently some uh, rotten storms are out there. He'll bring us an update. Also coming up tonight, something new in Tanglewood. Joyce is in the beautiful Berkshires tonight. Inside this beautiful new space on the grounds of Tanglewood, the first new building here in 50 years, a concert hall in honor of Seiji Ozawa. And tonight, the inaugural concert. Stay tuned. We'll be back. 
after these messages. The rush is on for the incomparable GE Profile Refrigerator. The GE Profile is full of smart ideas, like a shelf that tucks away for tall things, and shelves that glide out so you can find things. It's called Smart Space Design. Smart ideas that let you put things in, take things out, and clean things up so quickly and easily that you'll never again miss your favorite commercials. What are estimates? Most are guesses, that's what. And most go up. At Speedy, you know you never pay more than your estimate. It's the final price. At Speedy, you never need an appointment, and you never pay more than your estimate. We're working to earn your trust. Announcing the Speedy No Surprises exhaust sale. For as little as $89.95, we'll install an exhaust system from the converter back. Parts, labor, and a lifetime guaranteed muffler. See manager for list of vehicles covered. At Speedy, you get everything except surprises. Is that an open container, son? Yes, sir. Can I have some? Edie's. Evidently, it's uh, not your normal ice cream. There are some people who take shopping at Star Market very seriously, especially this week, because Star's having another big special sale and they want to be in shape to carry home all the savings. It's a four-day, 10-cent produce sale at Star Market. This Wednesday through Saturday only. Save on lots of items like peaches, bananas, Granny Smith apples, tomatoes, and cucumbers. They're all just 10 cents each. Attention, Ford just announced the rock bottom low finance rate of 2.9% for 48 months on 94 Ford F-150 regular cabs. 2.9% can mean over $3,400 in total savings, drastically reducing your monthly payments. Get 2.9% on a huge selection of F-150s equipped with driver's side airbag, rear anti-lock brakes, 24-hour roadside assistance, and much, much more. There may never be a better time to buy America's number one selling truck, but you better hurry, because 2.9% financing on F-150 definitely in soon. Only at your New England Ford dealer. I'm now enjoying one of the favorite pastimes in the town of Hall. It's called hanging out on the wall. Is this really what you do, Alana? Most of the time. Oh, you're doing pretty good. What do you like about this town? I get to visit my brother. All right. OK, well, Hull has some nice young people. They're all. Can you get a shot of everybody here? We promised everybody, Bruce. Here's I'm going to jump off this wall real quickly. Bruce, I want to go this way, because there's a lady this way that I'm not sure she hangs out on this wall all the time. But do you? Do you hang out on this no, wall? No, on the beach. On the beach. <laughs> Have you lived in Hull for a long time? Well, about 50 years or so. Yeah. And you really love it? Oh, very much. Because yeah. you like the ocean? Oh, love it. OK, well, nice talking to you. It is a little overcast out here, Bruce. I don't know what the weather's coming up, but uh, maybe you can tell me that. Let's go now to Bruce with weather. Okay, Liz, you're good for a couple of hours, and there's going to be some more thunderstorms coming on through, and that's essentially our forecast. Uh, in the meantime, maybe you want to swim over to Boston Light for a quick visit to the lighthouse keeper out there, as we've got a swimmable night here until more thunderstorms come on through, because it's going to be warm and humid again tonight. Last night, record high dew point of 78 here in Boston, as high as the dew point gets, even down in the tropics. Very rarely do they exceed 78 degree dew points. Uh, we're looking for some patchy fog late tonight as temperatures fall to the lower 70s. Actually, they're going to go up a little bit. Uh, and we have a light variable wind. We've had a feeble sea breeze along the coast for much of today, keeping us cool. Look at 60s here, but 90s to the southwest, 70s and 80s to the north and west. Cooled off by some heavy thunderstorms. And now we're looking at dew points in the 60s, temperatures in the 70s and 80s to our west, and more weather starting to head in once again, trying to knock that temperature down. Uh, but it probably won't be successful for more than an hour or two. Watering the lawns, perhaps causing some more damage, so I have to keep an eye on that. Frontal system up here with the warm and muggy air to the north. Got a high pressure area, the Bermuda High out in the ocean. With the warm and humid air from there, and a hazy, hot, and humid air continuing to dwell from the Mississippi River eastward and on through the Atlantic coast up through New England, trying to move in the direction of the Maritimes. And we go into the clouds for the latest radar shot, showing you some heavy thunderstorms in central New Hampshire, many of them coming in the vicinity of Joyce. Joyce, get under the table out of the concert hall there at Tanglewood uh, as we look at a good deal of thunderstorm activity coming in through westernmost uh, New England, the Berkshire area, uh, right on up to uh, 
midpoint here, about uh, Orange, Athol, and uh, southwestward. This is all coming in like this. Should be here in another couple, three hours, although at this time of the night it tends to fade. It still has the potential to produce some more heavy rainfall and uh, some damage with some hail and, of course, some strong gusty winds. We've had reports of winds to 50 and 60 miles per hour with numerous reports of tree damage today. In fact, out in Westboro, trees reported to be four feet in diameter and 100 feet tall, stripped of their bark and some knocked over. Those are the reports from the National Weather Service, by the way. Uh, we've got partly sunny weather tomorrow with the fog thinning on the coast. It'll be hazy, hot, and humid tomorrow with a light variable wind, therefore perhaps a, a light sea breeze cooling the coast as it did today. And then it's under another repeat here. Showers and thunderstorms developing during the afternoon. Some could be rather strong with the gusty winds and again the hail, which was reported to be golf si uh, ball size in many spots. 90s, 80s, and some 70s up along the main coast, and you've got a high tide just about noon for tomorrow. Here is the heat in the east. It's hot and a little bit drier in the southwest. Note much of the country not experiencing much cool weather except in the northern Great Plains. But it's going to be a while before that gets here. In fact, by the time it does get here, it's going to be washed out. So for the next few days, really not much of a change, really hot and humid on Saturday into the mid-90s, late day thunderstorms. And on Sunday, becoming a little more unsettled, especially late in the day, right on into Monday morning, still steamy, and then starting to dry out a little bit and cool off somewhat as the winds go into the northeast. So uh, it's just another repeat, uh, and you're going to have to keep uh, aware of any heavy thunderstorms in your area, and we'll bring that to you if needs be. All right, we'll check back a number of times, Bruce. Mm -hmm. We thank you right now. Nice place to be when the weather is hot, right where Liz is in the seaside community of Hall. Liz? Okay, Jack. Well, you know, I might find a carnival because I seem to find those wherever I go. There's one happening here, and a little later on, we're going to tell you why we're here. We're also going to find some fried dough. Power Rangers, this is just for Nicholas, my son, who's out there, who loves your Power Ranger. You're an interesting look at a Power Ranger. Speaking of people in uniform, though, before there was a Coast Guard in Hull, there was the heroic men of Hull. They would stand upon the deck of the ship and watch as awful doom approached with no recourse and no way to stop it. It's summertime, summertime, some, some, summertime, Applebee's summertime, some, some, summertime, summertime, summer fair, Applebee's summer fair, summertime. Pick one, pick two, pick three, Applebee's triple choice, mix and match everything you want to eat. One price, one meal, lots of food, what a deal, wow, can this be real? Be there, get there, don't miss summer fair food, this cool comes only once a year, Applebee's triple choice. America's favorite neighbor. They are on the run. And you can help. WBZ's Randy Price and the Violent Fugitive Task Force are fighting to bring New England's most wanted criminals to justice. We know who we're looking for. You might know how to find them. New England's Most Wanted, Tuesday at 6 on WBZ News 4, because you have a right to know more. For over 70 years, when they needed information, New Englanders have turned to WBZ Radio. Today, WBZ News Radio 1030 has compiled one of the largest, most experienced radio news staffs in the nation. Add to that the reporters and extensive resources of WBZ News 4, Gil Santos on sports, and David Brugnoy at night. And you have the source for radio news. WBZ News Radio 1030. Why pay more? Now at Circuit City, get unbeatable low prices and 0% interest for six months on select top brands. Plus, pick up this RCA 8mm camcorder for only $477.97. This GE VCR with remote for only $166.97. And this Pioneer CD player for an unbeatable $89.97. Why pay more? Hurry into Circuit City today. Welcome to Circuit City, where service is state of the art. Ever since he was a boy, Forrest Gump had no idea where he was headed. Are you stupid or something? Stupid is, stupid does, sir. But wherever he went... Go! Yes, yes, Tiger! Opportunity followed. Paramount Pictures presents Tom Hanks. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're gonna get. Forrest Gump, rated PG-13. Now playing at theaters everywhere. 
Well, you know, all day today we've been celebrating the community of Hall, as we've told you about it. It's a, it's a community rich in maritime history. As a matter of fact, one of the incredible sights and sounds that you will get when you visit here is the Life-Saving Museum. And it, it, it deals with the heroism of the past. When you visit the Life-Saving Museum, you never know who you'll meet. The narrow passage into Boston Harbor took the wooden sailing ships directly by the Rocky Hull coast. That trip, with its intricate maneuvers, sometimes spelled doom for vessel and crew. It fell to the people of Hull to rescue the frightened mariners. The first professionally staffed life-saving station on the coast was founded right here in 1889 by a courageous and skillful Hull native, Captain Joshua James. My name is Captain Joshua James. I'm the keeper of the life-saving station at Point Allerton here in Nantasket. His real name is Frederick Pratter. Captain James actually died in 1902, but he plays the role with an eerie reality. My crew was trained to be able to respond to any weather conditions or any sea conditions. We were, we lived with the sea. A rescue at sea was a dangerous and deadly task. If you could visualize the ocean behind me with waves 20 or 30 feet high, as high as the mast of a ship, a wooden sailing ship jammed tight on the rocks out there, they would stand upon the deck of the ship and watch as awful doom approached with no recourse and no way to stop it. Their only hope, the skill and bravery of the rescue crew battling the seas in a humble surf boat. Ten men, five on each side, would row out through the surf in order to get to the wreck and preserve the lives of the men that were there. The lifesavers were ever vigilant, especially during the stormy months, and their courage spelled success. In fact, in all the years that I was at this station, we never lost a man who was alive when we went for him. The men of the life-saving station did the immediate job, but the residents of Hull also showed what they were made of. When sailors would be cast on the shore, the people of Hull would be gathered on the beach. They would have warm clothing, blankets, hot food, hot drinks, ready for the shipwrecked sailors, and they would take them to their homes. And I think that uh, that's a remarkable achievement. As for Captain James, he commanded the station until 1902. He died as he had lived. Joshua James and the crew had been exercising the boats all morning on that Sunday morning. James stepped out onto the shore, turned back, said the tide is ebbing, and fell dead on the beach. If you get a chance, you really should visit the Life Saving Museum, uh, Museum when you come to Hull. It's really something to see. Behind me, people are lining up to buy tickets to this carnival. But this carnival is more than just a commercial affair. It's an effort to uh, raise funds for some school activities here in Hull because this community is at an interesting point. It's at a crossroads. And coming up a little later, we're going to tell you about Hull and how it looks at its future. Right now, we'll go back to you, Jack. All right, enjoyed that very much. Thank you, Liz Walker. Let's turn to sports. Anumi's in for Bob LaBelle tonight, and a big star in baseball's coming to town. Well, I was, uh, I guess, uh, just a kid when Willie Mays was in his prime, but Mays was the best I've ever seen. But people compare Ken Griffey Jr. to Willie Mays, and that's a pretty a lofty company, but he's in town tonight. He's on a tear. And standing by at Fenway Park as the Seattle Mariners come to town as their own Scott Wally. Scott? Okay, Jack, you're right. Fenway Park, the place to be tonight for sure. A chance to see Ken Griffey Jr. swing the bat. We'll visit with Junior in just a moment. There's a place filled with wild animals where children smile, where everyone's friendly, where learning is fun where there's always something exciting to see. And it's all in one place, at Southwick's Wild Animal Farm, New England's largest zoo, off Route 16 in Menden, Mass. Who knows, you might even fall in love. Chili's has discovered how to make an onion blossom. Remember, we are professionals. Don't try this at home. 
Chili's Awesome Blossom, a huge onion-battered, flower-looking appetizer thing. Only a chili. I look at life Hi. larger now than I ever did before. I have a job I enjoy. I have a beautiful daughter. Certain things happen in people's lives, but this helped me learn. There's no boundaries, no barriers. We here at our store and all the Walmarts, we treat people how we want to be treated. And if you go out of your way a little bit, it comes back. Hey, what's up? There's a reason for me to be here, and maybe that's the reason. To help other people and to make someone's day a little bit better. It only happens once every four years. A world championship bigger than football, basketball, and baseball combined. And this year, it's happening right here in America. The World Cup of Soccer, brought to you in part by MasterCard. No game on the planet is more celebrated. No card on the planet is more useful or accepted. MasterCard, official sponsor of the 1994 World Cup. Uh, more paste pecani sauce. This ain't paste pecani sauce. Looky here, we got the lunch police. Pace has a spicy, bold taste that livens up any dish, and it's made by folks in San Antonio. Well, this stuff's made in New York City. New York City? Darling, we're just gonna have to shut you down. Spice up all your foods. Pick up the pace. WBZ News 4 continues with Bob Newmeyer and New England Sports. Arguably, he is the best all-around player in baseball. His name is Mr. Ken Griffey Jr. 32 home runs still on pace to do the unthinkable. Namely, eclipse the single-season home run record of 61, held, of course, by Roger Maris of the Yankees. For more on Jr. and the state of the Red Sox, let's go live to Fenway and Scott Wally. All right, thanks a lot, Numi. Start of a four-game series. Everybody excited about seeing Ken Griffey Jr. It's Aaron Seeley against one nasty six-foot-five left-hander in uh, Randy Johnson, and that means some changes in the lineup for the Red Sox tonight. Cooper is out at third. Rodriguez will play third base. Tim Nearing is going to be at first tonight for Mo Vaughn, who's been hobbling anyway, and Bruno's in left for Mike Greenwell. In fact, you might not see Greenwell at all this series, and you're definitely not going to see Roger Clemens. Greenwell had tests on his ailing left shoulder today, still waiting for results. It's a problem he's had all season long. And as for Clemens, he was uh, scheduled to start one of the games this weekend on Saturday, but Butch Hobson announced last night that he would hold Clemens out until after the All-Star break. Clemens was working on a two-hitter against the Angels Monday night, but left after seven innings after feeling tightness in his right groin. Clemens missed a month with a groin injury last season, and the Sox have decided to go the cautious route. Good decision, wouldn't you agree? Ken Griffey, what an amazing athlete. 32 home runs, halfway there, and it's not even the all-star break yet. He has definitely been the story of the season. Here's another story for you. He's homerless in his last 11 games. That's his longest homerless streak of the year. But he is still on a pace to beat Roger Maris's record of 61. If I do it, I do it. If I don't, I don't. I mean, it's, you know, that way. I mean, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to lose any sleep, lose any hair. I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm just going to do the best job I can and take what the pitchers give me. There's a long drive! Go on! Even with no dingers in his last 44 trips to the plate, Griffey has averaged a home run every 10 at-bats this season. Junior says he is not concerned the ball has not been going out recently. No, I've just been a little bit tired. The swing got a little long. Uh, just got to shorten it up and then and go back to what I was doing before. Griffey grew up around Riverfront Stadium and the Big Red Machine, his father's Cincinnati Reds. Being from Cincinnati, we're both from Cincinnati, so I saw him play when he was about 15. And I, even at that time, he was head and shoulders above a lot of players. But, uh, you know, who knows what he can do? Uh, a lot of it's attitude. You know, if he keeps his head on straight, I'm sure uh, he's obviously got the talent to do a lot of things. And There's a drive way back. Ken Griffey Jr. has hit number. And you can also count Roger Clemens and tonight's starter Aaron Seeley among Griffey's admirers. Being from Seattle and, and following the Mariners when I was growing up, uh, you know, uh, I'm kind of a Ken Griffey Jr. fan myself. Uh, you know, he's, he's got a real sweet left-handed swing, and, uh, you know, he's a real powerful hitter, and you just don't want to make a mistake to him. For me, I'd like to get everybody else around him so I can go right after him, give him an opportunity to take his swings at me and, and, um, and basically be aggressive with him. Um, I did that in Seattle on a 3-2 pitch, and he, and he smoked it, you know. Another 3-2 pitch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. 
Well, Clemens might like to challenge Griffey. Junior says that that isn't the case with everybody. If it's a close game, I know I'm not going to get pitched to. Um, if they have a... Uh, Can you speak yeah. up a little bit, please? <laughs> I don't even yell when I yell I got it that loud. <laughs> So far, Ken Griffey appears to be taking all the attention in stride. As the weeks pass, the pressure will grow. But in early July, Griffey's still cool on his quest. How much does this record mean to you, Ken? What did it mean to you? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even close yet. I mean, I'm still, you know, 29 away. So I, I didn't think about it. And, of course, Frank Thomas of the Chicago White Sox is just one behind him at 31. So... Griffey might be chasing Thomas as well as Roger Maris as the season continues. Of course, the awful irony would be if a baseball player's strike would uh, turn this whole season into an asterisk. But right now, uh, Griffey is the story, and it's been a great story here in the early months of the season. Seattle against the Sox, start of a four-game series. Aaron Seeley against Randy Johnson and Ken Griffey Jr. and the Seattle Mariners. That's it from Fenway Park. Scott Waller reporting. Numi, back to you. All right, thanks, Scott. Afternoon baseball, three contests, including the Yankees and Angels, where New York's once cushy lead has evaporated to but a half game over the streaking Baltimore Orioles. Jimmy Key, though, has been a key for the Yankees, 13-2. He beat the Angels today, 5-2. Toronto wins, so do the Chicago White Sox. They are on fire. National League, one score. Strawberry plays, and the Giants win 5-4. Well, this Sunday night sports final features a Bob Lobel interview with former Bruins coach and assistant GM Mike Milbury. Among the topics, Milbury blasts Boston College and athletic director Chet Gladchuk for intentionally deceiving him in many of the hockey recruits. In this bite, Lobel asks him about his sudden flight from the heights. Things had to move quickly because, uh, because I just didn't want to be there any longer given the set of circumstances I found. How bad were the set of circumstances? I think they were atrocious. I think there are promises that were made that won't be kept. I think it's uh, basically a cover-up situation, and uh, I think they, they not only uh, made promises to kids they couldn't keep, they made promises to me they couldn't or wouldn't keep, and I think they broke a lot of hearts. When you say they, are you, are you specifically talking well, I'll about... I'll leave it in the generic term. You were pretty tough on Boston College in your comments to the Globe. Well, that's the first time I'd popped off, you know, and it'd been, a, <laughs> been a, you know, three weeks or so. And, and let's face it, I, I, my firm conviction is that uh, this guy changed my, my life dramatically. And, uh, you know, I believe he knew a lot more about the situation than he, he, he confided in me when he was uh, recruiting me for the job. And you feel you were deceived? Absolutely. Absolutely. This guy, of course, is a Chet Gladchuk, embattled BC athletic director. By the way, don't expect Milbury to be jobless for too long. You can expect ESPN and or ESPN2 to offer Milbury a job as studio and or game analyst for next season. And unless a coaching job crops up, I think you can also expect Mike Milbury to take it. Natural, very glib, intelligent guy, and... Uh, Angry at BC, angry at Chet Gladchuk, the complete interview Sunday with Bob on Sports Final. Oof. And uh, without a job at the present time. Yeah, well, wish him the best of luck. Okay, Jack, we thank you, we thank you okay. pal. Coming up next, the new Tanglewood. Joyce is out in Lennox. Joyce Kilhaywick on the grounds of Tanglewood, a brand new concert hall in honor of Seiji Ozawa. And tonight, the inaugural concert. Stay tuned. It's Leechmere's Extra Discount Days. Two days of additional discounts on hundreds of items, like this Olympus camera. Regular price $119.98, sale price $99.98, now just $89.98 for just two days. Get an extra $50 off side-by-side -side refrigerators, an extra $20 off any dishwasher, plus great sale prices on TVs, VCRs, camcorders, audio, and more. It's Friday and Saturday only, only at Leechmere's Extra Discount Days, where you always get something extra. Mm. With all the junk that comes in the mail these days, it's important not to overlook something really special. Your pre-approved Discover Card application. Just sign it and return it. There's no annual fee, and it's the only way to get the Smart Rate program, which lets you lower your own interest rate. So you can buy something you've always wanted. Watch your mail. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. 
Early one morning, we surprised another millionaire. If you've told one million I won Publishers Clearinghouse. They're here, the prize patrol. <laughs> Hurry up over. You deserve it. Oh, oh my gosh. Congratulations. It was a day no one there will ever forget. We're the Publishers Clearinghouse Prize Patrol, and we're looking forward to seeing you next month.